Well, volatility is obviously there because of all the uncertainty. I mean, for a long time, you could argue the financial markets were not really tethered to the economic underlying uh, you know, issues. Uh, the economy remains incredibly strong. As we saw, 4.2% in the U.S. in the first quarter, 3.5% in the second. Uh, confidence in, by consumers and spending is way up. Business slowed spending a little bit. It dropped from about 11% increase to 8%. But uh, there's optimism, probably the highest I've seen in about 20 years from CEOs in the United States. So I think we're seeing a lot of volatility because of the uncertainty. That's going to continue. Are those CEOs riding a wave of positivity because they've had the tax cuts and a very strong economy? So they've really enjoyed the best of it. The question is, what does 2019 bring? And if profits are not going to be 20%, they're going to be 10%. The economy is not going to be 4%, it's going to be close to 3%. Then surely we're not going to have that same level of confidence coming from the C-suite. So, Karen, it's a great point. I actually think the best is yet to come from the tax cuts. It's not really there yet. A lot of the early money was used for share buybacks. And that money, some of it came back from overseas and put to work. But really the investment, the capital expenditure takes more time. Uh, the supply chain changes from foreign companies investing in the United States and from U.S. companies investing takes more time. Once the investment happens, you then have to get the productivity from it. Then the economy grows. I don't think you're going to see the benefit of that for another 6 to 12 months because it's just starting to occur. Uh, so I think this is going to bleed out over time. The liquidity that these companies have today because of lower rates, m and uh, is, is, is still at highs. I think we're going to see uh, this for some time, this positive effect. Mark, let me take you on, because I'm an old cynic, and it's lovely to see you, by the way. Um, <laughs> one of the things your PR has told us you really want to talk about is long-term value creation. Well, I'm going to tie your previous answer uh, into this long-term value creation. Right. What is value creation about spending a trillion dollars in the year to August, I haven't got the latest figure, on buybacks? These guys and ladies and gentlemen in the C-suite in the United States have been given a massive fiscal boost. And what did they do with it? They bought their own stock. Come on, Mark, that's not long-term value <laughs> creation. That is spending money to get your EPS, EPS up today. I think you're seeing early buybacks be the majority of the spending. You're absolutely right because exactly what I said, though, Steve, you've got it. It takes time for businesses to get this cash. First of all, the IRS, the Internal Revenue Service of the United States, hasn't even interpreted the rules yet for how they're going to work across internationally. As that happens, they're going to start taking that money that, that, that's back in, in their coffers. And that's going to turn into more growth in capital expenditure. There's no doubt about it. You're seeing it. You're seeing massive increases in capital expenditures. You're seeing increases in wages. Our wages are higher than they've been in, in 10 years. I'm not going to let you not talk about buybacks. Where is the value creation in buybacks? Mark? Well, listen, every company has to determine how to allocate its capital. And if it doesn't, at, in the early stages, if it can't make a decision to invest that capital in capital expenditures, and it can't take a long-term increase in wages because they don't have the uh, uncertainty cleared from the trade wars and everything else, they're going to allocate that capital back to the owners, and the owners are going to reallocate that capital back into the market. That's what they're doing. But we keep getting told, I mean, my final point on this point, and Jeff's champing at the bit as well, mm -hmm. and we keep getting told that we're late cycle for, we're, we're, we're at peak margins for these companies. Well, maybe if they hadn't have spent all that money on buybacks and they'd have invested it when the cycle was good, when we were growing at 4.2% or whatever the huge figure was for the second quarter as well, maybe if they'd spent that on capital expenditure on their workers as well, we wouldn't be talking about peak margins and late cycle the whole so, time. So let me say this. Well, I'm defending it, and I, and I will, because you have to allocate capital best you can sitting in the CFO suite. Uh, I don't disagree with what you're saying. I absolutely agree that we need more capital expenditure to increase productivity, which will increase economic growth. And that's got to happen. That's where we're going to get our growth from. So eventually that has to come. That's what I want. You should agree with <laughs> Jeffrey, come in. Um, Mark, these are choppy waters, uh, very interesting things going on, and I just want to talk about a couple of specific examples. Sure. One is you have operations in Saudi Arabia. How do you negotiate that story that all CEOs have had to think about when it comes to the potential for reputational damage? It's a great question, and Saudi Arabia is the most recent example. We've seen it in the United States in the past with what uh, Donald Trump's situation. As you know, I was on his advisory council that we ended. Uh, ended. Um, CEOs have an interesting responsibility today uh, for our workers. We have a quarter of a million people around the world, them looking at what we do from a social policy standpoint and taking stands on issues, as well as making sure for our economics we're doing the right thing. So in the Saudi Arabia situation, um, I did not go to the, uh, to the conference that was there, uh, but we still have huge operations in Saudi Arabia. We have Arabia, we have lots of people there. And so we're staying on the ground and working with our businesses there. I just came back from China on Sunday. I was in China uh, leading a group called International Business Leaders Advisory Council, working with the party secretary and with the mayor of Shanghai. These were businesses from all over the world. BP was just on, their, their CEO, other CEOs are there. 
we're still as a business community trying to build bridges into all these different areas. We're not walking away when something bad happens. But there are consequences for bad actions. Do you, do you just have to accept that they, they, you may lose the odd contract or, or audit because people just say that's the cost of doing business. I, I just don't want to be associated if these guys have got operations in that part of the world. Absolutely. If we're talking back to Steve's point about long-term value creation, your brand is more important than your short-term profit. Yeah. And you've got to protect your brand and operate with that in mind. Hey everybody, it's Hadley Gamble from our new CNBC Middle East Bureau in Abu Dhabi. Thanks for stopping by. Now to watch more, you can try one of the videos that just popped up on your screen. And don't forget to subscribe.